worried if I could even negotiate the stage without stumbling, waiting with great anticipation for the ceremony to end so as to be with family and friends and to celebrate with them in person. So I know that listening to a long speech is quite the last thing in your mind. So speeches such as this are rarely criticised for being too short. It would, however, be remiss not to say just a few words about the University of Manchester, a truly global university that values its European and international students, staff and alumni, and we have over 160 countries represented on our campus. For those of you graduating today, deciding to study here at Manchester was a great investment, a very wise investment in your future, an investment that pays dividends almost as soon as you come to Manchester and start to study. Because the degrees that you'll receive today didn't come easily. Their quality is internationally recognised, and that can only serve you well in the future as you use your talents, your new qualifications, to transform lives. For our own faculty of biology, medicine and health, there are unique opportunities to transform healthcare with devolution of the health and social care budget to Greater Manchester. To make the healthcare system of Manchester meet the needs of our population, we need to provide the very best care. That means not only do we produce the very best healthcare professionals, but also that we deliver innovation and research into care effectively and efficiently, again, to transform lives. Over the last few months, we've had quite remarkable success in major research initiatives, such as funding from the National Institute of Health Research, who've invested over £40 million in Manchester, to create the largest biomedical research centre outside the Golden Triangle and a Greater Manchester Clinical Research Facility. These investments will transform the type of care that we will deliver in the future and give us better outcomes for our patients. Now, for most of you graduating today, this will be your first degree. But for some, it will be a second and occasionally even a third. And that demonstrates a continuation of your higher learning. And that's a reminder that we live in an era of lifelong learning, arguably most important in the areas of clinical and healthcare professions, to ensure that our patients, be the individuals or populations, always receive the very best care that we can provide. Healthcare professionals no longer practice as individuals, carrying all the information needed in their heads. Those days have long gone. Knowledge currently advances exponentially. We work in teams accessing, interpreting and applying high quality, up-to-date information to optimise the care of our patients. So continuing to learn throughout our careers is essential. E.M. Forster, the great 20th century writer, wrote in The Observer in 1951 that spoon feeding in the long run teaches us nothing but the shape of the spoon. We need to give you more than that. So perhaps the greatest thing we've taught you it's not facts, but how to learn, what to learn, to think critically, to ask questions, so building on the very foundations of your degree. In the university, we recognise the needs for continuing professional development, and we are developing new programmes and postgraduate degrees tailored to the needs of health and social care. And I hope that many of you will take advantage of these and continue your lifelong learning with this great university. The Alumni Association can help you remain in contact with the university, linking you with a community of more than a quarter of a million Manchester graduates across the globe. As alumni, you can help students in so many ways, as ambassadors, help with student placements and employment, or even directly having your input into the future of this university. And as you leave, you'll no doubt have some mixed emotions today. Excitement, apprehension, regret perhaps. But most of all, you should have pride. You should have great pride in your achievements and great pride in this university. You deserve your success and we are very proud of you. So we sincerely hope that today will not be your last contact with this university. Remember that our doors will always be open to you and we will look forward to future interaction. Thank you very much. Vice President, ladies and gentlemen, graduands. Firstly, many congratulations to all of you who are graduating today. Whether you're qualifying, qualifying as a social worker, a researcher, a mental health practitioner, a midwife, 
or a nurse, you will have learned a great deal about your subject and probably even more about yourself. I hope you're all feeling extremely proud and the Division of Nursing, Midwifery and Social Work here at Manchester is extremely proud of all of you. Many of you will have overcome great obstacles, not least to gain admission to a Russell Group University in the first place, and then to commit to and complete a rigorous course of study, and to balance that studying with carrying on with the rest of your lives. And these are not small achievements, so well done. You're graduating from the Division of Nursing, Midwifery and Social Work in a time of great change, as Professor Greer has just indicated, within the health and social care community in Greater Manchester. So you've learned, you've heard about the devolution of Manchester's £6 billion health and social care budget from central government to local councils and the National Health Service in Greater Manchester. And the big idea is that local decision making should enable the system to be more responsive to local need and help achieve better integration of health and social care. And as many of you, all of you probably have heard, this is an issue at very much at the forefront of the news again this week. So it's hoped that localising this kind of decision making about health and social care in Manchester will it enable us to improve the health of the people in Manchester and close what are quite enormous uh, health inequalities that still exist today between us and other parts of the UK. So, for example, a 65-year-old man today living in Kensington and Chelsea in London can expect to live another 22 years compared with a 65-year-old man living today in Manchester who can only expect to live another 16 years. So these are huge health inequalities to close. We don't know whether health devolution will help us to achieve this. Nobody knows, but one of the roles of the university is to evaluate whether it does or not in a very critical way. So these are very exciting times, and many of you will be working in Greater Manchester, and you'll be part of these developments and contribute to them. So whatever your course of study, you will have learned how to approach complex health and research problems and using critical thinking, come up with the solutions to improve outcomes. Because despite what it feels to you when you've got an exam looming or an essay to be got in the following day, actually it's less about the facts that you've learned and it's more about the critical thinking, the behaviours, the attitudes and the skills that you've developed that are going to set you up for your future career and for your life. And as Professor Greer has already said, whatever the award you are receiving today, this, this shouldn't be the end to your studies. We all should be lifelong learners and even if you found this course a bit of a grind and at this moment in time you're thinking, never again will I go and study in university, you now need to find your passion. And your future study will be more specialised and you will enjoy it more. Because learning and personal development are an absolute joy when you find your niche. And we do hope that you'll consider returning to the University of Manchester for your future study. My own experiences as a student nurse and a staff nurse, then as a PhD student and academic, have very much shaped my views on what's important in personal and professional matters. And it's important to have goals, but sometimes we need to change direction and it's important to be flexible because these changes in direction can bring new and unexpected and delightful opportunities that turn out to be better than what you'd originally planned. So it's important to, to embrace these opportunities. Many aspects of your life will change during your career, but remember that you have control of your destiny and you can make these important choices and seize these opportunities. And one of the other things that you're almost certainly bound to encounter a lot is failure. And I say this as an academic, uh, for academics, failure is a, a lifestyle choice almost. Every day we have manuscripts turned down, we have grant applications refused. And actually, what we need to do is seize failure as a learning opportunity 
and make sure that we learn how to do things better next time, try not to be weighed down by the negative emotions that failure brings, and you actually find that through failure, we all become better, and we end up being in a better place than we would have been otherwise, or doing a better piece of research, or whatever it is that your thing is. So at this point in time, I just want to um, remind you that you wouldn't be here without the help, love, and support of many of the people who are in the room with you today, their colleagues, their friends, their parents, their spouses, their partners, whoever they are, I just want you to take a moment to, to think about how they've helped you to achieve what you've achieved today. And what you've achieved is absolutely fantastic. And then just a reminder to keep in touch with the Division of Nursing, Midwifery and Social Work after you've graduated, because we all want to know how it turns out for you. Thank you very much. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Social Work, Razia Ali. Claire Booth. Gemma Louise Butterfield. Charlotte Emily Byrne. Thomas Joseph Cheel. Christine Clark. Stacey Heather Davis. Laura Greaves. Michelle Green. Laura Helsby. Grace Johnson. John Kermode. Zoya Kokar. Alexandra Lambert. Helen Alice Lancaster. Heather Latuchek, who also has an Academic Achievement Award for the highest in cohort. <laughs> Amy Leach. <laughs> Edward William McCleavy. Rebecca McGee. Holly Martin. Charla Moore. Lucy Mustafa. Anna Cecilia O'Keefe. Matthew Roach. Kaylee Louise Sands.
Holly Smith. <laughs> Hayley Tobin. <laughs> Katie Tolman. <laughs> Sarah Louise Warren. Emma Louise Whittycase. <laughs> Maeve Williams. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Clinical Research, Louise Helen Delante. <laughs> Leanne Jo Holmes. Rosemary Huntress. <laughs> Hayley Edith Cooter. <laughs> James Peter Smith. <laughs> Adam Sutherland. And for the degree of Master of Research in Health and Social Care, Dominique Anne Morgia. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science in Advanced Practice Interventions for Mental Health, Primary Care Mental Health, Zabina Gill. <laughs> Annie Elizabeth Kite. And in advanced practice interventions for mental health, psychosocial interventions for psychosis, Jonathan James Oust. <laughs> Alan O'Connor. <laughs> Suzanne Marie Robertson. And in advanced practice interventions for mental health, dementia care, Janet Cooper. <laughs> Gemma Louise Donovan. <laughs> Alison Margaret Holden. <laughs> Mark Anthony McCann. Sarah Louise Monks. <laughs> Carla Jane Page. <laughs> Michael Thomas Smith. <laughs> and for the postgraduate diploma in advanced practice interventions for mental health, dementia care, Linda Margaret Holt. <laughs> and in social work, Sharina Louise Bryan. <laughs> Raphael Oladajeo Fabunmi. Karen Green. <laughs> Geneve McGowan. <laughs> Rosie Pate. <laughs> Rosie Louise Thompson. Samantha Louise Wake. <laughs> and
and for the postgraduate certificate in advanced practice interventions for mental health, primary mental health care, Paula Ann Crawford. <laughs> Sonia Ajo. And for the degree of Bachelor of Midwifery with Honours, Josie Aidy, who also has an Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Sophie Rebecca Allen. <laughs> Rachel Bailey. Amy Barrow, <laughs> Hayley Beckett, <laughs> Lisa Beckett, <laughs> Miriam Board. Rebecca Tamsin Brown, <laughs> Sophie Butter, <laughs> Teresa Chatterton, <laughs> Jade Connolly. Ali Croft, who also has an Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Eron Cumming Cunningham. <laughs> Hannah Denton. <laughs> Claire Louise Donvervand Barrett. Nicola Ann Doan Oral. <laughs> Bronte Duxbury. <laughs> Kaylee Edge. Samantha Louise Emery, who also has an Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Abby Elizabeth Fendick. <laughs> Rachel Ford. <laughs> Jessica Robin Fosh. Emma Louise Fraser. <laughs> Lucy Goddard. <laughs> Sarah Gunning. <laughs> Rebecca Jade Hatton. Kirsty Higginson, <laughs> Shannon Michelle Hogan, <laughs> Rebecca Marjorie Hogg, <laughs> Nasteo Jama. Yasmin Carolia. <laughs> Emma Lucy Kirby. <laughs> J. 
Georgina Lacey. Sarah Matthews. Danielle Jeanette McMohan. Anna Menegolo. Jesse Morris. Catherine Pambakian. <laughs> Abigail Sarah Pierce. <laughs> Ruth Jean Pendlebury. Elizabeth May Reynolds. Claire Roche. Victoria Rolt. Amy Lauren Russell Smith. Mayor Ryan Dawes. <laughs> Abigail Scott. Sarah Steele. Daisy Elizabeth Tudor. Sarah Marie Williamson. <laughs> Sophie Worrell, who has an Academic Achievement Award for the best dissertation. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Nursing in Child Nursing with Honours, Molly Abbott. Amy Archibald. Yeah. Gemma Armstrong. Yeah. Olivia Ashmore. Yeah. Zara Austin Bond. Victoria Claire Bamba. <laughs> Ella Berrington. <laughs> Hope Bertwell. <laughs> Sophie Calvert. Bethany Alice Chadwick. <laughs> Megan Rose Cox. <laughs> Sophie Edgerton. <laughs> Claire Elizabeth Foote. Charlotte Hall. Mark Halliwell. Catherine Heron Woolsey. Zoe Hubbard.
Natalie Hutchins. <laughs> Mariam Shafi Khan. <laughs> Catherine Ruth Kissack. <laughs> Laura Ann Kusick. Danielle Lamb. Georgina Milligan. Danielle Park. Jessica Part. Samaya Patel. <laughs> Hannah Peplau. <laughs> Louise Potts. <laughs> Charlotte Abigail Richmond. Nia Roberts. Danielle Roma. Catherine Ann Sadler. Alexandra Kate Shaw. Rebecca Sheldrick. Cassandra Jo Shilladay. Charlotte Jade Sinclair. Lindsay Smith. Francesca White. <laughs> Laura Jane Yates. <laughs> and in mental health nursing with honours, Florence Ackland. <laughs> Stephanie Alvarez. Catherine Rachel Aspinall. <laughs> Nicola Berry. <laughs> Nicole Boyd. <laughs> Nicola Kanama. Octavia Conway Keen. <laughs> Julia Claire Cooper. <laughs> Alison Louise Dorber. <laughs> Debbie Dickinson. Callum Joseph Doherty. <laughs> Samantha Jane Doan. <laughs> Matthew Eastham. <laughs> Paige Lily May Galton. Chloe Hall. <laughs> Sarah
Samantha Josephine Hall. Nazira Hussain. Sabia Hussain. Lucy Ives. Emma Johnston. Deborah Marie Jones. Diane Karen Stephanie Jubert. Emily Kerr. Lauren Jasmine Kirk. Rachel Lucy Lenahan. Kirsty Lippiat. Katie Martin. Megan McGreed. Chinaza Ofia. Catherine Olgard. <laughs> Bethany Rose Patterson. <laughs> Charlotte Penny. <laughs> Anna Marie Percival. Anna Fellas, <laughs> Eliza Raja, <laughs> Lucy Ann Ralphs, <laughs> Rebecca Regan. Harris Sean Richards. <laughs> Matthew Roberts. <laughs> Haley Rowe. <laughs> Jessica Rowling. Amelia Saunders. <laughs> Ellen Stiles. <laughs> Rochelle White Oak. <laughs> Lauren Wright. Abby Young. <laughs> Ida Zulu. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science in International Development, Globalization, Trade and Industry, Paisi Zeng. And in medical imaging science, Farhad Farhan Al Mutari. So we're nearly there now. 
There are a few things, very few things left for us to do, but um, for those of you who are qualifying with a nursing or midwifery qualification degree, um, what we need to do now is state uh, the affirmation. You'll remember you did that at the beginning of your training, and we're going to redo that now with now you as graduates. So those of you who are graduating with a nursing or midwifery degree, could you please stand up? And you'll see on the program on page 63, we've got the affirmation. Now, I just want to, um, we're going to all say this together, those of you who are graduating with those degrees and me, but I just want to draw your attention to the typo before we get there, um, <laughs> which we found out rather too late in the ceremony that just went before. So if you, if you just uh, scroll your eyes down to the penultimate bullet point, it says you're not going to abuse your position as a dentist. <laughs> Can you make sure that you say midwife or nurse appropriately when we get to that point? Okay. Okay, so we're going to try and keep together and all say this together, okay? Okay. I affirm that I will make the care of my patients my first concern. Treat every patient politely and considerately. Respect patients' dignity and privacy. Listen to patients and respect their views. Give patients information in a way that they can understand. Respect the right of patients to be fully involved in decisions about their care. Keep my professional knowledge and skills up to date. Recognize the limits of my professional competence. Be honest and trustworthy. Respect, respect confidential information. Make sure my personal beliefs do not prejudice my patient's care. Act quickly to protect my patients from risk if I have good reason to believe that I or a colleague may not be fit to practice. Avoid abuse of my position as a nurse. Work with colleagues in the ways that best serve patients' interests. In all these matters, I will never discriminate unfairly against my patients or colleagues. I will always be prepared to justify my actions to them. I so affirm. Thank you. On behalf of the university, I once again congratulate all of you who are graduating here today on your excellent achievements, and I wish you every success and happiness in your future lives and careers. I now declare this ceremony closed.